Every person you listen to about investing has a different idea on how to manage money to be a smart investor. The problem is about 25% of the people that are actually giving advice are actually using the advice they're giving. In a recent survey, a lot of people were asked, do you use the advice you give? And they said no. And of that 25%, an even smaller percentage are actually growing significant wealth with their strategies. In this video, I'm going to share with you five strategies that helped me create a passive retirement income at the age of 40 so that I could truly live my mission and help people start growing their wealth. The first thing you want to do is you want to cut everything you can in order to invest. And at first, this feels a little uncomfortable. And I'll talk about how to make this a little more user-friendly in a minute. But the first thing you want to do is cut all of the stuff you don't need so you can invest more and more and more. So can you cut down to one car instead of two cars? Can you cut all of your cable and streaming services so you have more money to invest for a time? Can you drive more affordable cars so again, you have more money to invest in real estate? There's three things my wife and I did about 10 years ago that changed our financial picture because it freed up more money to invest and it gave us more power over our finances seeing our investments grow. The first thing we did was we cut all our credit cards and we lived on cash for a while. We wanted to live in reality. See, credit cards, if they're not being paid off every month, is kind of living in a fantasy world. We're spending money we have not yet earned. So we're actually spending fake money in hopes that one day we'll earn that money in order to pay it off. So we decided we're cutting these cards in order to live in complete reality. That way, if we don't have it, we can't buy it. We cut down to one car. We sold my wife's car and we had my car and then we decided do we really need another car? And we thought, well, let's give this a trial for two to three months and see if we can actually make it on one car. And you know what? For the first few months, it was kind of uncomfortable when I needed to go someplace and she needed to go someplace and we had to maneuver around that. And then it became smoother and it became smoother and it became smoother the more we communicated and the more we were making sure we understood each other's calendars. And you know what ended up happening? We never went back to two cars. We still own one car today. And it's not because we can't afford it. It's because why throw more money at another vehicle? Let's just buy a really nice vehicle, throw the rest into investments. And if we ever want to buy another car, maybe we will. But right now, we haven't because we continue to invest. And here's the thing. Those three things completely changed our lives in investing in real estate. You want to cut as much as you can so that more money can be funneled towards investments. Most people think about investments and they're like, listen, and I don't have money to invest. But what if you could create money in the money you're already earning? And then of course, later on, earn more money to invest. But right now, let's look at all the place we're spending money that we don't have to spend money. And it might be $100 a month at first. And then maybe we grow that to a few hundred dollars a month. And then we ask our boss for a raise and that can jump into 400 a month. And all of a sudden, it starts to pile and we have six or $7,000 and we might be able to put down on a piece of real estate that pays us every single month. So understand there's something you can do every single month to cut just a little bit more. And the third thing we did is we house hacked. We bought a duplex and we lived in half of it and rented the other half out and lived completely for free. So we didn't have a mortgage payment for a amount of time. So guess what we could do with that extra money? Hint, hint, right? We could invest more real estate. So when you ask, how do I really manage my money to be a smart investor? Part of it is cut the fat so you can invest as much as possible. Money is for multiplication. That's the mindset I want you to have. Money is to multiply so we can help people. Cutting everything out also kind of freed us a little bit. There was less cars to maintain. We didn't have to make as many decisions about finances because if we didn't have the money, we didn't spend the money. So it limited the amount of decisions we made, limited the amount of maintenance we had, and all of a sudden, we began to experience a little more freedom. In fact, so much so, I now define success based on the freedom I have, not the money I have. Because the truth of the matter is, a lot of money with no freedom is not success to me. I'd rather have net worth of 10% of what it could be if it afforded me real freedom versus a massive net worth where I had to work and be on a treadmill to always create that income. So cutting things so you can invest in real estate also frees you up and gives you more time to think about real estate to think about other types of investing you can do. The second thing you wanna do is identify your I feel right when. Now, what does that mean? The I feel right when is the idea that when I do this, I feel really wealthy. 
When I do this one thing, I feel really wealthy. And you have to identify what that is. What is it that when you do, you feel like a wealthy person? Some of you grew up and you never went out to eat. So going out to eat makes you feel wealthy. Or some of you going to get a massage makes you feel really wealthy because you're taking care of yourself. Or some of you going away on a weekend in the mountains and renting a cabin makes you feel really wealthy. Or going on a cruise, something makes you feel really wealthy. I like to have both big picture things and small picture things. Big trips I like to take that make me feel wealthy and little daily doses of when I do this, I feel wealthy. Why is that so important when becoming a smart investor and managing your money? Because when you're only thinking about cutting expenses, your mind starts to think in lack and not abundance. So after you go through your expenses and cut it, now it's time to pick a couple things that make you feel wealthy. Whatever that is for you. For me, that's going out to eat, not worrying about the prices. See, I love to go out to eat. It's one of my favorite things to do is go out to really nice restaurants and really enjoy the culture of just being and eating with people and having great experiences with people that I really enjoy spending time with. But the truth is, when I grew up, when we went out to eat, we ordered based on price. And it took me years to break that habit of going to a restaurant and say, I want this meal, but this meal is $2 cheaper. I'm just going to take the cheaper meal. Because not only that, I got to tip 20 cents on every dollar, you know? So the more expensive meal is, is even more expensive. And my brain had to break out of that lack thinking. Like there wasn't, like I couldn't go make more money. And the idea is picking something that really makes you feel wealthy. So figure out what that is for you. Maybe it is a spa day every other month or every month where you go away and you just do a lot of self-care where you feel really cared for or where you break away from the kids and just go out with some friends, have a few drinks, have some meal, have a really good time hanging out with people you enjoy. Maybe that makes you feel wealthy. Maybe going to a really nice golf course every month makes you feel wealthy. But building into your wealth building strategy and your investor strategy some time to spend things on you that make you feel wealthy is massively important because what you're doing is you're training your brain, you're wealthy and you can go make more money because we're going to come back and do this again next month or next quarter or whatever or next year. The idea again is that we're training our brain to think about money as a resource and as something that can be made easily. Most of the training on money today makes it sound like it's very hard to earn so you want to make sure you hold on to it as much as you can and if you die with a lot of money you've succeeded. I just don't see money that way and I don't think you should either. Money is a replenishable source. It's like a tree. You cut it down, it can continue to grow. That's the beauty of it. You can continue to grow more. The idea of money is not only do we cut, but we also want to spend. You actually spend your way to wealth a lot faster than you'll save your way there if you do it inside of a system, a disciplined system that allows you outlets and release valves so that you can go out and feel wealthy and then continue to invest and continue to invest. It took my wife and I a really long time to understand the value of this. And for a while, we just didn't do it because we didn't believe in it. Because we thought, if I go down that road, where does that stop? Right? I'll go here and I'll say, oh yeah, I feel, I feel great doing this and feel great doing this. And then all of a sudden, you're just back in debt. And so we just held it off for a long time. But just pick one thing one thing that you can do per month that makes you feel really wealthy. It changes your brain and I really want to see your financial picture grow. You want to be a smart investor, you've got to start investing into your own mindset that will teach you that you really are wealthy. Before we go on to the next tip, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We put out a video every single weekday on real estate investing, business, how to grow your finances, how to start investing smartly, and we'd love for you to join our family. So make sure you subscribe, hit that bell notification, and smash that thumbs up button. Let's get back to the video. The third thing you want to do to become a smart investor is start as soon as you can. If you've never really invested and this is brand new, get going today. If you're a savvy investor and you've been rocking it for years, then the goal is not to continue to invest. The goal is to grow the amount you invest. So the more you put into the economic engine needs to continue to grow. So people that have been investing the same amount for years because that's just how much money they make, I call that passive of investing. I don't want you to passively invest or passively plan for retirement, meaning you invest what you have left over. I want you to actively plan for retirement, meaning grow your income so you can invest more. And if you can't grow your income through your job, you create a side hustle or find a different job to create more income so you have more to invest. But the day to start that is right now. There's a saying that goes, when is the best time to plant an oak tree? 20 years ago. When's the second best time? Today. 
get started right now so that it continues to grow and you can feel the benefits of that as soon as possible. The fourth thing you wanna know about becoming a smart investor is make investing a line item in your budget. My wife and I changed our entire financial picture when we started making investing a line item, meaning every single month, 10% of our income goes into an investment or a wealth account whether we have it or not. Every single month, 10% goes into that account. Everything we make, doesn't matter if we sell a couch that we're not using anymore or we earn revenue through our businesses, 10% of it goes straight into our wealth account because we're investors. That is an expense. That's not our money. That's our investments, right? It's different. And making investments part of your budget again, allows you to see, listen, this is something that we do whether we have it or not. We have to earn and stretch ourselves to make sure that we have this money to invest. And if you only have $5 to put into a wealth account, fine, put that $5 in there, get the habit down, and then as more money flows, you've got the habits to support that extra income. And as a side note, your age will dictate the intensity and the risk of your investments. The younger you are, the more intense you can invest and the more risk-based investments you can make. The older you get, you need to be a little bit more conservative, invest in things that are a little bit more guaranteed and safe as to preserve your capital. But it doesn't matter if you're 20 or 70, investing now is always the right decision. And the fifth thing you wanna do to become a smart investor is stay very consistent with these four things. The number one thing that torpedoes success is lack of consistency. I go to the gym once, I don't have a six pack and I ain't going back. The idea is that if you want real results, it's gotta be over time. The success formula is the correct effort over time. I used to think it was just effort over time, but then I want you doing the right things. It's correct effort over time. You do the right things long enough, you're gonna see success. Jim Rohn used to say, most people aren't patient enough to be successful. It's a great statement because a lot of us, we live in such an instant gratification world that we really want things right now. And if you're not willing to wait for it, the good things won't really come. So you gotta make sure you do these four things very, 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 very consistently. And no matter how you feel, no matter if you really just wanna go blow a bunch of money, we're not gonna do that because our mission and our goals are pointing us in another direction. But I also wanna give you a gift to help you navigate this exact process. I wrote a book called The Seven Secrets of Managing Money and Creating Wealth, and I wanna give it to you for free today. So go down in the description, click that link, you're gonna be taken to a page, and you can snag your free ebook of The Seven Secrets of Managing Your Money and Creating Wealth.